I think at this stage it's like an addiction. It's like I've done it so long now that if I don't paint sort of, you know, every week, I feel something building up inside me, like I need to just put it out there. For me, the whole, the whole thing is I found uh, a kind of um, a way of working where I can express political things that I believe in. It's not always about the aesthetics. Sometimes it's just about an idea, even if it's not executed to perfection. My name's ATM, I'm a street artist and I paint endangered species. I'm Zabu, I'm uh, 24. I'm from France, but um, I've been in London for the last four years. My name's Tom Blackford, but I also go via uh, the name Ink Fetish, which is a moniker that I kind of adopted for myself um, when painting on the street, uh, which I've been doing for, I'd say, the last 10, 10 years, I'd say. My name is Captain Chris. Uh, I work as an illustrator and graffiti artist. Uh, I'm based in London, from New Zealand originally. I was on the list of the 50 most influential people in British wildlife, but whether or not that means that I'm actually having an effect on policy, I mean, I'd like to have an effect on policy. Who knows? It's, it's impossible to tell exactly. The reason I started painting is because I just love comics and cartoons and I just wanted to paint my own characters and a lot of places really big. It's my main drive. And I, and I paint it and it's just for very selfish reasons. I think there's a mix of different styles that are popular today in, in, in street art. And, and you know, it's funny because I don't really look at one, any one particular style as being more predominant. You know, the environment in which we are in Brick Lane, there's so many different styles that come to the fore and there's so many different people that are attracted to those styles. So there's something for everyone all the time. The street art, anything that you can find in the public domain, that wasn't put there by advertising agencies or the shop owners themselves. Can you assume that it's street art? It can be uh, bigger scale murals or smaller scale pieces like paste up, stickers. It can be advertising takeovers by artists. Uh, it can be uh, spray hand spray paint. Uh, it can be smaller installations. It's basically the artist's imagination is the limit what they can achieve these days. When I, you know, I'm going to paint, uh, I have to do the design first, so I always ask for a photo of the spot and kind of dimension, so I get a, you know, the scale. So yeah, we'll start with a pencil sketch. It takes a good few years before you learn how to kind of get good can control and find out which paint works for you and which caps work for you, and you've got to kind of get used to uh, it's just scaling things up really. But a lot of the time I'll just like to freestyle it, you know, so I'll just uh, turn up and kind of sketch on the wall just because that's the way that I like to paint, like today. Uh, and sometimes it goes alright, <laughs> most of the time. And then I just get my cans and uh, <laughs> kind of start painting really. A new study that just came out recently shows that London is the number one tourist destination in the whole world and quite a lot of people make it as part of their journey uh, to go on street art tours, go to areas where there's a high uh, concentration of street art to be part of their holiday. I think that street art shapes neighbourhoods in London in a very positive way. Um, particularly an area like Brick Lane. I mean, look at this area, it's culturally dynamic. Um, people love the fact that there is creativity happening around them. They love the smells, they love the activism. The history of Brick Lane is interesting. It's always been quite a, um, an, a, an active area in terms of you know, you know, populations coming and growing you know, to this area. It's also been quite a poor area. I think when you look at you know, particularly graffiti culture, um, it tends to be centred around, um, you know, areas which perhaps weren't as developed, you know, as other places and might have a lot of um, derelict buildings in them. And this area was badly damaged during the war, um, so that meant rents were cheap and, you know, it possibly wasn't looked after as much as it would have been. Artists came in because it was cheaper to live here and essentially it just grew from there. 
then in terms of like getting a space in, in London, there are a lot of people that kind of, I suppose, curate spaces and walls. Just finished a big wall uh, for Blizzard uh, in LA, and we then came back and we did a wall for Mountain Dew. Uh, I did Nike last year. We do this for a living, and um, sometimes we might do work for a brand or something, and people might not be happy about it, but like, it doesn't really fuss me, you know? It's like, I won't do something if I'm totally against it, but if I've got no problem with the job and I think it's good for me and for them and I think it's cool, then I'll do it. It is a global movement. For example, there's still countries that have zero tolerance for street art and graffiti, which means people cannot paint, they just won't be able to get permission. So for these countries and cities, it's gonna be a long way to get to the stage where London is now. There's going to be a surge of people to a certain area that has quite a lot of street art popping up, which is always good for local businesses. Street artists come in and put their work up on the streets, they already feel an attachment to the work because it's something that enhances their area. Not in the same way, but similarly when, when a new shop opens and it creates a buzz. Essentially we talk, we're living in an international world. This is only a small, Brick Lane is just a small area but it gets a lot of attention because um, the bloggers are here, the Instagrammers are here, the Twitter, Twitterati are here, the Facebookers are here. And they're, they're, they're showing, they're putting a face to street art. They're um, giving a voice to the artists that come into this area and that's very important. That's why people in Brazil or Argentina or anywhere like that look at what's happening in the street art scene and they, they center on Brick Lane. They say, you know, this is a place I want to go because my brand my art is going to be seen by so many more people than if I was just drawing in my local uh, neighbourhood, and that's important. Because the urban landscape is changing, especially in big cities in London, we had buildings all over the city which had artwork on their side, but now they've been demolished. It's not in a controlled environment, so anything can happen to it. People can vandalise it, uh, the space can be offered to different artists after a, after a while. So basically street art is not meant to last forever, it's got an ephemeral nature, which in a way is quite democratic. Around here, like turnaround time for a piece could be a week, two weeks, or you know, like you paint it one night and it'll be gone in the morning. I, th I like the change, like for me it, it's, you know, if someone comes and paints over, over this piece and, and then I go and paint over something else and then it happens again and again, you know, we're always going to be painting. In terms of controversies, I think the one underlying thing is, is the difference between what is graffiti, what is street art. Um, I think it's dying down, uh, I really do, you know, the whole um, graph culture which is, is, is essentially, you know, lettering and crazy style, you know, lettering and sort of, uh, it's, it's quite, uh, you know, a, a mysterious, you know, um, place to be if you like, if you're a graph artist, you know, you're doing it for, for a particular audience. Um, while street art, uh, artists are coming into this you know this area and they're doing it for you know they're painting on walls for a much wider audience you know their their intentions are slightly different they're not necessarily scared too much in terms of being seen or known um, and I think there might have been a clash between the two the dynamics of the two in the past I think that is settling down now I can I, 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 I think that's settling down I think both the big both groups are beginning to learn to live with each other you know you get people that paint like characters you get writers and stuff that paint letters and things and then you get people that do like stencil art and everyone's always going to huff and puff at each other a little bit because you know someone might not like this and might not like that but I mean I tend not to get involved in all that kind of stuff. Yeah so I guess at this point in time street art and graffiti are kind of there's artists that are sort of treading walking the line between street art and traditional graffiti and even fine art you know you've got a lot of muralists now that wouldn't even associate themselves with graffiti artwork they're just they're just fine artists really but they're choosing the street to express themselves and put their artwork up so it's it's kind of a mixed bag these days
is there a difference between street art and gallery art? Um, I'm, I think there is a difference, um, but it is becoming blurred. And I think you, you get lots of fine artists that are equally at home on the street and you get people that are, are you know, skilled on the street that can easily go into the gallery. I think that is, you know, I mean, I think the people coming onto the scene now are very adaptable, you know, in, in, in that way. They're different mediums, of course, they're different skill sets, of course, but these are very adaptable, you know, creative individuals that are coming into this, this scene. Probably most people never even go to an art gallery at all. So if you do a painting in kind of quite a poor area, uh, it, it's like, well, it's an art gallery for them. I mean, people have actually said that to me. You know, oh, thank you, we've got our own art gallery now, you know, at the end of our street. It's become so accepted by everybody and people have kind of embraced it now that, like, street art, gallery art, whatever, it's all art at the end of the day. You put it in a gallery, it's, it's gallery art, you know? You put it on the street, it's street art. It's just art. <laughs> I think government response to uh, street art uh, in London is confused and slow. I think they realise that there is a need for it. I think they realise that culturally it adds a lot of value, but they get confused because of previous laws relating to graffiti in particular. You know, we're talking a lot of the people that that you know work in City Hall or they are lawmakers. They ain't the sort of people that are going to be naturally hanging out in Brick Lane on a, on a Saturday and Sunday looking at street art. So I think people on the scene need to, you know, to continually give a compelling argument in terms of what street art is and how it can be of value. There are like three or four areas that have become, they're called halls of fame, which is somewhere graffiti artists will go and paint and they don't have to worry about the authorities or getting arrested. I mean, I've been arrested a bunch of times. You're going to tread on people's toes, you know, and it's unavoidable, really. Well, I've painted in places where some of the locals didn't, don't quite appreciate it. I painted one on um, a World War II bunker on the coast, and someone was very angry, saying I was desecrating kind of a monument to the war and, and people who died in the war. But I, I wasn't really... Des I, I painted a hen harrier on it, which is a beautiful bird of prey, which is illegally shot in this country because they kill game birds for the, you know, for the people who want to shoot. So, um, so it was to, to kind of publicise that campaign. So, uh, but mo most, 99% of people really appreciate it. I'll tell you the story about the first time I got arrested for painting. <laughs> so I was like really young and uh, we'd, been, we'd been like, I, was got, I got really drunk. Me and my friend were walking back and we had like pens and cans so we were just like tagging everything on the way. This is when we didn't really give a shit. So we were running over this bridge and then I turn around and they've set um, like two attack dogs on us. So I was like hiding behind this bridge and the whole way all that I could hear was my friend getting mauled by the dog. And he was like, ah, 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 <laughs> which I, <laughs> I laugh now because I know he was fine. But uh, yeah, it sounded pretty bad. And then eventually they caught me at the bridge and we all both got arrested. This is my full-time job, so I get to like hang around and paint walls, and people pay me for it. And I don't take it for granted. I think it's it's great, you know. Like, so that's the best part for me. It's kind of empowering to see an idea or a sketch that I might have even just had the night before suddenly realised on a huge wall somewhere. And the fact that you've got artists from countries literally travelling the world now painting 100 foot walls, much like they did in like the 50s in America. You know, you'd have whole murals advertising cigarettes. You know, that was unheard of even maybe like five or six years ago. So that just shows how far it's come. Things change and they move so often around here. For some people it's a good thing, for some people it's a bad thing. But, you know, you can't argue that it's always changing. I don't know, I just think you should, everyone should just do what they want to do. That's what I always say to everybody about when they're moaning about like, you know, someone painting over this or doing that or whatever else. It's like, just, just do what you want to do, you know. It's 
the best way to think about it. <laughs> I'm quite looking forward to see like any new upcoming artists. I think it's um, we've got a good new generation right now. I think hopefully it's going to be everywhere. I think the future of um, street art is a, is a very exciting one. I think there's a dynamism to this whole street art scene. I think people coming into London from different parts of the world are bringing different ideas and they're wanting to express themselves in, in very, very exciting and dynamic ways. And that is a very good in terms of building the relationship between artist and viewer. And I think that's going to keep on happening.